It's not another Buffalo podcast hosted by three of the most underqualified sports personalities this side of the canal with John. All you people out there who are like, these idiots don't know anything. First of all, you're right. And second of all, I'm just a dad talking in a closet, but like, you know, like I'm just saying. And Brando. We have this trust built on whatever it is, like Bibles and gold bricks and whatever Brandon Bean's drinking over there. All right, welcome back to Not Another Buffalo Podcast, a victory Tuesday Woo-woo. evening here. You can find us on all platforms at Not Buff Podcast, socials, all that crap. I'm here with my buddies Pat as Brando on the other side. We're going to call and, him Pops now. Yeah, Pops, yeah. Dad, it, Pat, okay, so we didn't announce this on the podcast last week because we wanted to let you do the honor. So I'll let you have the floor, Mr. Uh, newly Dad, even though we kind of spoiled it already. But uh, how's how's the dad life? How's it going so far? Oh, it's it's going really well. Shout out to my job for letting me have some uh, paternity time. Um, my son, he's he's really well behaved. Um, my you know? son, it's weird to hear you say <laughs> yeah, that. That's I was weird. I was like at the store the other day talking about like I need to get stain remover that's safe for my son, and I was like, oh my god, I'm one of those dads. But no, <laughs> everything's going really well, and my my girlfriend is. You know, she's an amazing mom, so it's it's been really good. I get really superstitious, so I had to kiss his head every time the Bills scored a touchdown and then run around the, <laughs> the living room. But she's my, my girlfriend's like, we're going to find some sort of way to sedate me for Thursday so that I don't get up and scare him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you guys are going to games and he's 25 and you kiss him on the forehead. Yeah, well, I'll be like, listen, son, do you want the Bills yeah. to win or not? I know. That. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you what are you willing to do? Well, I'm glad you're I'm, I'm glad your job is giving you some time off. Me and Brandon are not so, you know, we don't let it slide. You're back on the podcast week one after. So, so this, this job doesn't have as much flexibility. Sorry, Patty. <laughs> oh, Talk to good? New York state about that FMLA, man. <laughs> right. Yeah. right, right. Yeah. Also, also we're, uh, <laughs> we're cutting your health insurance, Pat, from the podcast. Sorry. <laughs> Brandon, what about you? We, How are you doing? We offer you, health you, insurance? Can I say yeah, that? No, yeah. <laughs> right. I'd like some too, please. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Brent, how, how are you doing, man? Good, man. The game, the stadium was awesome on Sunday. You know, I've had some bad experiences. It was awesome. I found a shortcut, so I missed a bunch of traffic. It saved me like a half an hour. I was super hyped about that. I think the season ticket holders all keep their tickets for the week one opener. So there's no crazy clowns there messing around. Yeah. Lots of cool people. Lots of nice fans. Everybody seemed to have a good time being down. And the vibe was tough. Remember, I like you made that nice clip. I was like, got to have something... Something start us off the gate hot here. And and it, we couldn't have done any worse out of the gate. And that was <laughs> oh, with the, like the first couple drives and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we moved the ball on offense, but we got shredded on defense, which does happen. I mean, it happened against the Raiders. It's happening against the Giants. And we do bounce back. And McDermott's a very good adjustable defensive coordinator. But it was cool to be there. Beautiful day. Um, I'm glad Josh didn't get hurt. Everybody left happy. Can't be mad about it. Yeah. Well, everything except Josh's left hand, right? Which is like probably if you're going to pick any part of Josh to get hurt, you know, it, it's fine. But let, let me Vader, tell you why it wasn't. Darth Vader. Arm, exactly. Drop it off. Give him yeah. the mechanical one. mechanical one. Yeah. Oh, man. R.I.P. Uh, James Earl Jones, yes, by the 93? way. That is sad. Mufasa. That's sad. But yeah, Mufasa, among other oh, things. I forgot about him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget about Mufasa. <laughs> well, we have a second. I just want to thank our sponsor, Small City Realty. So if you're looking to buy, sell, or manage property in Western New York, you got to call our guy, Zach Corzilius. His number is 585-409-1088. That's 585-409-1088. And that's for buying, selling, or if you need property managed in Western New York, you live out of state and you want uh, your Airbnb or your rental property managed, Zach Corzilius, Small City Realty. Again, that's Zachary at smallcityrealestate.com if you want to shoot him an email. Can I tell you why I wasn't nervous during this game at all, which is weird because I'm usually a worry wart. I'm somebody who doesn't watch the Bills game with friends. I'm somebody who just has to sit with my significant other and, Bunker down. and be by myself because, like, you know, she's the only one who understands my reactions. Like, I don't like people being loud around me when I'm trying to, you know, hear everything, all that stuff. But anyway, it, it was just because the Bills were moving the ball. That's yeah. all I want to see. Yeah. That's all we wanted to see last year when the offense slowed down. That's the most frustrating part of Bill's games if, is, if, is if the offense can't get a first down, you're dead in the water because it's score points and score more points. Like that's the name of the game. So even if your defense slips a little bit, if your offense can still march down the field, you're still going to have a chance. You're still going to have a, you know, a chance to score seven in the last two minutes, no matter what happens in the last minute even. So 
that that was good. It worked out in our favor, and um, I'm glad we didn't start out with a loss. But if we keep moving the ball like that, I think it'll it'll look good. It it was reminiscent of when we came back against the Ravens, except I think the Bills did not move the ball that well against the Ravens. No, they didn't. And to see them turn it over, the turnover was directly in front of me. And I'm like, shoot. So, but I was not worried because they, they really, like you said, they, they drove down the field. I don't know about you, but I hit some live bets. I was like, let's get, when, when they were driving down, I'm like, you know what? Let them score here. Let them score. Let, let get a field goal. <laughs> and I'm going to hammer this line live. And I did the same with the Dolphins game. So I was happy about that outcome, but you know, they're a different team with Kyler Murray. We, I said it on here. I, I'm uh, in freaking Vegas with the point five hook, man. Yep. Um, oh, Pat, Pat with a uh, well, score in the game picks. Bills to win, yeah. not to cover. Yeah. yeah. We should have done that. We were, we should have trusted our gut. I, mean, I, I, I can't, half I can't, half I can't man. Points. I'm obligated. I'm obligated. I can't. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of points. Well, did you have any Pat. props? Do you have any Marvin Harrison Jr. props? Because I feel like those would have absolutely crapped the bed. Hopefully not. No, we, we didn't. Thankfully. No. Thankfully. Can we talk about this for a second, though? And, and Pat Roman, Pat. Moran said this on Twitter. We're talking about our secondary. Benford and Douglas only got targeted three times for two catches and four yards. Yeah, what was it? Greg Rousseau got targeted more in coverage. Yeah. <laughs> so this was it, it, week one is always screwy, right? And we've got what Dalton Kincaid with two targets and one catch or something like Did that. Did you see what Joe Brady said about that though? Yeah, I mean, it's because uh, did you see the all twenty two clips that people were posting he, on Twitter where got, there's like there's like four Cardinals around him? He got the Diggs treatment, he and did. we were wondering who was going to command that. So it's really neat to it, it's a little peace of mind to think that we have a weapon enough to do that because nine other receivers got open because of yeah. it, and that worked. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm fine. Feed everybody. I mean, Dalton yeah. and Kate can have you know zero catches as a decoy. I didn't draft him in fantasy. I probably would have if he was available where I wanted yeah. him, but so it was a yeah. tough week for tight ends all around the NFL, but it was like old country buffet out there for the bills offense. <laughs> now we got, we got, we got to talk about this for a minute. How elite did Allen look to you, man? Cause I'm sitting there so and elite. I'm vintage Allen. I I'm watching this and I said it to my students. I was like, guys, this is the best quarterback play you might ever see in your life. It, it is for me. I'm like, this supersedes even what he has done prior just to see what his ability on the field, some of his throws, th- these are darts. He's throwing missiles. That throw to Matt Collins, I was sitting there right at the end zone and looking at it I'm like 13, one on one, one on one, and boom, right there. That's like a Gabe Davis one on one touchdown. It doesn't matter yeah. if it's Gabe Davis or Matt Collins out there. You got the guy to get the ball in the right spot. It's really awesome to see. And it, it circles me back to our conversation that we had earlier where we have to enjoy every single second here because it's so awesome that he comes out here in a week that the NFL's average offensive output was the lowest it had ever been on week one. And the running backs kind of stole the show where two is the only 300 yard passer and CJ Stroud was up there. But I mean, I guess I guess Derek Derek Carr. Oh. Right. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, we'll, Alan, see if that, we'll see if that holds up for the rest of the season. Allen played like an MVP. There was MVP chance in the stadium and I was taking part in them. And I just, I just love it. I love it. Yeah. Have we established that like Allen just likes to switch every other year. He plays really good or really bad in the, in the season opener. Cause he had the Rams game. He played really good before that. It was the Pittsburgh Steelers opener where he played really bad. And then last year he played really bad against the jets. So are we just, are we just flip flopping there? Steelers and jets have really good defenses. True, but you know, Alan wasn't at his best for those games. But Pat, I want to ask you, how what is it like to have to control your emotions while watching the Bills? Like you, you must, you must have more. You're going to have more restraint than me and Brandon combined by the end of the season, I would think. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's more so. I mean, you would think like by the time I could process what was happening with like say the the DJ Dallas kick return touchdown, I didn't have enough time really to get too worked up. But it's like you know, I, I guess in the beginning of the game, seeing these long drives. No, really, just kind of whatever death by a thousand cuts really gets me upset. So, yeah, just, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, there's, never, there's no, never a dull moment, right? No cure for it. So, Matt, can we <laughs> talk about your dad jokes book behind you? You guys want to hear one? Can you read one? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm ready for this. Oh, I had a fantasy name for you too, Brando. Tell me what you think. Oh, yeah, all for it. Yeah, a very goofy fantasy team, a yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. I like that. He, I yucked on himself in the end zone yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why do they call that cord a USB? Why? 
because USA was already taken. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my God, you got Brandon going there. Oh, I love that. I'm going to give that to my school for the joke of the day tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon, how many, how many, you have to come up with a joke every single day? No, no. Okay. I've That's probably it. submitted 10 in five years. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, but there is a joke of the day. Someone's yeah, writing them. the announcements. Yeah, somebody turns them in. You Most ever have one days. that you're like, you're, you're gritting your teeth. You're like, oh, yeah, man, that one probably there's a couple where there. like parents are coming in to pick up and it's bad. And they're just kind of like, eh, you know, like <laughs> but most of them are good. Now, before we get to this, like Miami game here, did you guys, have you guys seen this about Deshaun Watson's burner account on Twitter? Oh no, this guy <laughs> just can't get any worse. I mean, okay, so this is a lot of speculation, but I just want to read you some of these tweets and you let me know if you think that this is Deshaun Watson or I'm going to tell you now, I think it's Deshaun Watson. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You know, my only like other thought is that he just doesn't care enough to do this. He looks out like I don't know if you guys watched any of the Browns game, Pat. I don't I know. Did, if you I did, I did just it. because it's he's on, so bad. On it's basic so bad. TV. It looks like he doesn't even care. It looks yeah, like he's yeah. it looks like he's sucking on purpose so that because he knows he's guaranteed two hundred thirty million dollars whether he plays for the next six years or not. Like it's, it's, it's sicko contract. It's yeah. I mean it's in Deshaun's awful. in in his defense he did he he was under a lot of pressure. To get sacked a few times, but Pat, is this your burner account? Because there's a lot of tweets like that in here. Here, let me let me read some of them. I don't know. I watched the game. I mean, he wasn't good, but he, he got the crap no, knocked he, out of him. It is it is Micah Parsons and stuff like that too. But man, I mean, Deshaun's arm looks shot for sure. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> the name of this Twitter account is Leroy Bickerstaff. <laughs> Leroy Bickerstaff, and it's Leroy Bickers Four is the at name. So if you want to go read some of these tweets. And so he refers to Deshaun Watson as four. So when I say four, he's talking about the number four is number on the jersey. You guys probably would have figured that out. <laughs> Top of her most latest tweet. If four had a tackle like Trent Williams, he'd be able to show his greatness. Four can't succeed when he's got no chance back there. And, you know, somebody quote tweeted the, uh, the Amari Cooper drop, I guess you would say. And Leroy Bickerstaff quote tweeted and said, and we still going to sit here and act like four still don't got it. Pressured on damn near every drop back and four still standing in and delivering dots in the fourth. If that ain't heart, I don't know what is. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> questions for you. What's the time for these tweets? When are they being tweeted? I don't know. These are screenshotted and it's like a day ago. So Monday, not during okay. the game. Obviously that some, would disqualify some, them. Some Monday morning quarterbacking going on, you know, yeah. whatever, hindsight 2020. I'll, I'll give you guys one more. Guys in the locker room got fours back all day. There's no evidence of that. All day long. It's y'all It's y'all that never played the sport and don't know four like that coming on here and blaming four for not succeeding in an impossible situation. It's not impossible. You it's have not. the best offensive you had, line. You have great weapons. Your defense Joe, is one of the best. Was you anyone sacked more than Joe six Flacco. times though this weekend? I am curious to know. Was, was he the most sacked quarterback this He might weekend? be. Sacks are a little bit of a quarterback stat though. True. They True. are. True. Sorry though. I, I think he's trash though. too. I'm just I just I was on the Browns <laughs> hype train last year. Hey, I know, I know. And I'm on need, the Browns hype train this year. I have their defense. I, yeah, I want like we'll get to it in game picks because we're gonna pick their upcoming game this week. Yeah. But I it it'd be really nice if they just, you know. If you haven't noticed, Deshaun's in trouble again with another lawsuit. So he might end up on the Did commissioner's e- exempt list. Uh, yes, an additional lawsuit. If you can believe it, there's another one. This is this the Jameis Winston redemp arc I've been waiting for for. I know we've been years. waiting for the Jameis Williams redemp <laughs> arc for like in. six or seven years now. I mean, but anything's an upgrade. I mean, they've got who DTR on that roster as well. Who's the other backup that they have? They have Tyler Huntley as well on this roster, oh, don't yeah. they? They have three backup quarterbacks that are all comp- competent, and I would take them all as the Bills QB two, honestly. Like you know, Joe no Flacco offense, in Green Bay now. Indianapolis, I, I thought. That's right. He is playing this year. I thought that I that in, was weird. I think he's that in Indianapolis. He, that Cleveland didn't just decide to bring him back after everything that went right last year. Yeah, he's he's Colts. Yeah, so. but it's him. Sorry, I just had to bring that up because I thought that that was too funny. And uh, funny. even if even if it is not him, like, come on, poor like poor Browns fans that didn't want this. Like, there's plenty of Browns fans that are you know like you know it's with any fan base, but. Yeah. And uh, Baker Mayfield for, throws four touchdowns. 
on Sunday right. too. So you're did just you like, hear the uh, Sam Darnold had a week? Yeah, yeah. Opposite day. Did, did you hear the guy calling in this Cleveland sports talk to the radio host? He was comparing Baker Mayfield to Deshaun Watson, and the radio host blew up. He's like, I don't want to hear this anymore. We were watching trash. Baker Mayfield wasn't trash. So he was just going going out about it. He's not wrong. He's not no. wrong. No. I saw a clip of, <laughs> I, I don't know, it's the, uh, I should know the name of the the guys. They got like Big Cat on the show and stuff like that. Oh, Pat, who's, yeah, I think it, maybe take. it was, yeah, maybe it was part of my take. They were trying to uh, compare Watson's, con- like is, is Watson's contract not just the worst football contract in history, but the worst contract in history? <laughs> and they're it's like, Bobby what Benilla do you think it ranks with like the Louisiana Purchase? Like, yeah, <laughs> what, right. what, uh, what level is it on? And I think the I mean, how many million was Louisiana purchased for? Eighteen. Eighteen million. We got quite a lot of land for that much money. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, I have uh, one for you then. Which sure. trade is worse? The Bryce Young trade, which nets CJ Stroud, Tank Dell. There's if you look at the the trade for yeah for that it, it goes. There's and more it's, and it's more um guys. um. The number one overall pick from last year, Caleb Chicago, Williams. Caleb Williams as Caleb well. Caleb Williams is in that. And DJ Moore, I think. DJ too. Moore is in yeah. that. He's on my fantasy yep. team though, so. Yeah. <laughs> Best two. You catch a lot of balls out there, bud. Props. <laughs> or the Deshaun Watson move. Which I think it's, trade I think is it's, worse? I don't know. They're they're both pretty bad, but I think the Deshaun Watson one is disgusting just because of the context. Well, like, it, it, and I feel like the Deshaun Watson situation is a little bit farther gone than. Uh, it, it, there still is potential that maybe Bryce Young. You know, and I mean does really pull have it you, together and we're not having this conversation at them? the end of the year. No, I mean, I'm have not watching them. <laughs> they, did, they got Bad. shut out last You're week. You're right. I, I, there is still hope though, right? There's yeah. more hope for Bri- Brandon. Will you say there's more hope for Bryce Young than Deshaun Watson, even if the hope level is at zero no. for both? No, because I think you saw Watson be an all pro quarterback and Bryce Young threw a pick on the first throw of the game in year two. Deshaun Watson's oh. arm looks like Brett Favre's arm now. Like maybe worse. I mean, Farm takes offense to that. Um, but I uh, think he's too, he's too busy stealing from charities to care. Yeah, so I mean, from pure like supporting cast talent, though, I mean, Deshaun Watson would have a better setup, I guess. But I think true. it's the 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 Watson signing is worse because Cleveland was set up to be good and their infrastructure was good, whereas the Panthers weren't expecting to be good. And like. To, to just that's, that's fair. To just put I a mean, dud in Cleveland when you have right. all pros on both sides of the ball, a great offensive line. Bryce Young's not supposed to be good, but he's supposed to flash, especially now with talent put around him. It's just tough because they're they're not getting one this year either. No. I, I don't know. I don't know what oh, to tell you guys bad. in Cleveland it's and in Carolina. So. Well, Go Bills. Been, been there. Been there. Yeah. That's uh let's talk about this Miami game a little bit. Are you guys uh I don't know. Should we talk about it in context of our game picks? Because I kind of want to see where everybody's at with that. Like confident, nervous, excited. Are you already okay with a potential loss here? Have you, has anybody <laughs> comes to has anybody come to grips with that? Grips ten and two all time against the Dolphins. Josh Allen is grips. Well, Travis Etienne had some grips. The Jaguars would have won, you know. But <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's very true. It's very yeah, true. Yeah, could have been twenty four seven after that play. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I actually I want to look at the ESPN prob- win probability chart on that. I feel like that's that's got to be like a huge because what is it? Next play, Tyreek goes for ninety yards or something yeah, like that. What a swing of events right there. Talk yeah. about emotional roller coaster. I think uh, I think I'm not worried in the slightest because we own them in every way possible. We are their big brother. They are irrelevant to us. <laughs> We have four straight division titles. They don't. They blew it last year in the last game of the year. We beat them all the time. So I'm not worried. No, I, I'm sorry. That's Brandon, sorry. I'm putting that in a clip tomorrow morning. That's perfect. That's gold. You're going to have <laughs> Dolphins fans in your mentions. Like, that's it'll be funny. good. It'll be I think good. Uh, Jordan Poyer makes it interesting. The guy who knows the offense in and out. How Maybe. are you? Gonna I mean, sp- but the, the offense is, is different enough this year, probably. Right. Yes. But even Alan said it himself, that's going to be a challenge how they're going to change things up. But I think the ultimate, the ultimate slap in the face to the Dolphins would be Alan hurtling Poyer for a touchdown. So that would be cool to see, but I, I'm not worried. I, I think it'll be a good game. Two teams. It'll be, we we've shot downhill every year. It's going to be the pressure. on It is regular season. So. 
It's it's just going to be pressure on Tua. Is Greg Rousseau going to keep his pace on fire? Is he going to be pretty good? Yeah, he's on fire this year. Yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> At all, we're going to play good. Matt Milano destroys Tua, but he's not there. So is Dorian Williams going to be able to cover A-Chan out of the backfield with his speed? Ooh, that's going to be a tough matchup. That, so I, honestly, like the reason I'm nervous is not because of the Miami defense on the Bills offense. Like I think the Bills offense will get theirs this game. It, it's it's when you're missing guys like Taron Johnson. Taron Johnson is key to facing yes. up against Miami, your slot, your slot guy. Now, granted, you know, Miami's slot wide receiver is probably going to be Devin A-Chan because... It, or HN, sorry, because their wide receiver three is like Braxton Berrios. Because it's actually Odell Beckham Jr. Who was injured and is not going to oh, play this game. I so. like that you had that ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <Got> him. <laughs> yes, you did. Pat, I have a question for you now. Without Taron Johnson, your boy Cam Lewis has to play. Yeah, I mean, he played pretty well. He had some good, he had some good run fits. In the game, I, I he did play know, well. I thought he, he played play well, well too. That's why I bring him up. I mean, and, yeah. and if you guys are talking about wide receiver talk here, um, just to get you guys a little bit titillated, um, <laughs> I'm ready I believe to be only three that. wide receivers in the entire game caught a pass. Let me check here. Actually, no, two wide receivers in the entire game caught a pass the for Dolphins? the Dolphins. So, I mean, maybe... Was that literally literally just the only two that got passes? Model? Yep. So, wow. I mean, maybe I that's guess- a testament. You, I, I don't feel any better about Dorian Williams covering anyone or being any better in any sort of, you know, zone scheme. But, I mean, that is something to consider. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. Like maybe they would be matched up on outside corners. It might be Russell Douglas. And I mean, for most of the time, right? Of course, they're going to put Tyreek in the slot for different stuff. Of course, they're going to yeah, move a- HN in, in the slot and stuff like that, too. But so can I tell you what I'm worried a little bit about is sure. the defensive rotations. I think of it as basketball style defense when you have to play the Dolphins, where if you don't get to your rotations in time, somebody's going to be running wide open. And to have guys that have been in this system not be here on the surface level, it makes you a little bit nervous. But if you dive down a little bit, Cam Lewis has been on this team for five years, six years. The safeties are new, but Hamlin's been here for three years. Douglas is a stud. Benford's a stud. Maybe you even see a little Kyrie Elam at some point who's flashed against the Dolphins. But to... To see the line of communication from Hyde, Poyer, White, and insert Levi, Wallace, or Matt Milano, whatever, to see that they could look at each other and know, okay, I got the flat zone. I got cover too deep. I got this without even like checking. That's the part I'm a little worried about. But I, I think that there's enough here on our defense that it will cover up the mistakes enough, even if they do get loose. 21 points against our defense outside of that kick return is a fair number for the Bills defense this year to yeah. to Plus be the drive that was extended by that uh, yeah. phantom personal foul call. Sorry. So that could have been four points less. Yeah. So if you get if you keep everybody under 21, I think we have a great record this season even if that defense gives up some big plays. Yeah. But I'll be I'll be curious to see the personnel usage and and even on that first drive again, we talked about that first drive, how do they react to the Dolphins? being all circusy on offense. Yeah, a couple of things too. So interestingly enough, the Jags played Miami last week. They played the highest amount of man defense in the entire NFL for the week. So that's an Jags interesting did. tidbit. Jags played a lot of man against the Dolphins, which usually teams like to go zone against the Dolphins. So that's yeah. just interesting to think about. They did um, limit, limit them to not well, that yeah, much It's offense. like not that much yeah. points, and, right? I mean, that's but a, you know, Tua still got their, their passing yards I up I feel there like you're too okay well. too if, if you only really have one long play happen. You know what I mean? If you're playing... And the entire yeah. Game, so. Yeah. When they can put up, you know, 60 against the Broncos, you're, you're happy with anything under 30. I was going to say too, did you, did you guys watch Sunday night football, Brandon? Of course I know you did. I don't know. If you I, the whole thing. I fell asleep when yeah, was, I didn't uh, see it going into overtime, but I mean, yeah, it's, it makes me sad watching Trey a little play bit well. that he's, well, he get he did get beat for one touchdown by Jamison Williams. Pretty bad. He's but good receiver, like, though. Yeah. I don't know. I just miss Trey. I just side Me note. Too. He was too. a he's a great guy to have on the team. You know, whether you know on the field stuff aside, like I just really loved Trey White and was a huge fan of his. So hope he does well uh there. But do you guys want to get into our game picks here? Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. All right. So game picks, pick six, pick ems. Let's recap last week. We have Mr. Pops Pat Cat. With the lead after week one with a three and three record picking Kansas City, San Francisco, and Arizona to win and 
cover the spread but not win the game. John and I coming in at two and four, both picking Kansas City and Detroit, losing out on the other games, unfortunately. So, Pat, you got a one game lead on us. Nice job. Okay. Game one Indianapolis at Green Bay. Indy is a three point favorite. Pat, what do you say? Malik time. Malik, give me the Packers. <laughs> All right. Well, my answer is actually the same. I have two words. Malik Willis, Indy minus three. (laughs) My pick is Jonathan Taylor is going to go off because the Packers have the 28th run defense in last year. Give me the Colts. All right. All right. That's good. That's good. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, because Pat's on the show this week, we had to get a Titans game in here. We got the (laughs) Jets at the Titans. Jets are minus three and a half point favorites here. Do they get off their sneed, John? I don't know. I kind of think the just the defense is going to eat Will Levis for breakfast. Will Levis had some some the Titans in general had some ugly turnovers that lost him the game last week to Chicago with zero off. And so I'm going to take New York Jets minus three and a half. They uh, they bounce back with a W. I don't know. Give me the Jets. I mean, Caleb Williams, the most undeserving <laughs> the Jets cash it in yeah. <laughs> yeah, most undeserving first game win ever. But yeah, so give me the Jets for sure. As long as Will Levis puts mayo in his coffee, I'm going to pick against him. Give me the Jets. All right. Now we're just talking about him. The Cleveland Browns take their pitiful quarterback down to Jacksonville. Jacksonville is minus three point favorite here. Interesting matchup. Two two stinkers of a game in their first weeks. Pat, Pat, who you got? Give me the Jaguars. Unless Watson gets put on the uh, commissioner's exemption list this week and it's Jamison Williams, which if they do, I reserve the right to change my pick that I'm going Jacksonville. Fair enough. Fair enough. And I think uh, Trevor Lawrence is better than Watson. So I'm taking Jacksonville. In other news, grass is green. Yes. Grass is green. The sky is blue. Rain <laughs> falls from clouds. Yes. Okay. <laughs> on to the next one. Now, this is interesting. I, I see Cincinnati always seems to start slow, but when does it become a trend? Is it like, you know, year one, year two, year three? You know, they, they throw up these duds, but we got the, the Bengals coming off of the worst loss of the week, probably against Kansas City in Arrowhead. Kansas City is a minus six point favorite. John, do they bounce back or does Kansas City reign supreme? I think Kansas City is going to keep rolling. They looked uh, pretty pretty good that first week, and I think they're just getting going. So they're going they're going to be good this year. Unfortunately, again, uh, Bengals go zero and two. Well, yeah, give me give me the Chiefs. Unfortunately, again, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> unfortunately, I, feel too. I agree. Joe Burrow has on record now that he starts slow. So Chiefs going to hammer that, and they're going to get a little revenge because they're the only team that has really ever lost to the. Bengals in the playoffs, right? They're the only team that's beat them. Yeah, so. pretty much. Pretty much. All right. We have the opposite team that beats Cincinnati. Seattle against New England. In New England, Seattle's minus three and a half point favorite. This will be the first home game that Bill Belichick has not coached in for New England since 1999. John, who you got? Well, you guys you guys predicted zero New England wins or whatever it was. One in 16. No, we for, had, for I had him at four. I think. Four? We had okay. Four. Got yeah. Pat might have had him at one in 17. So there's <laughs> that first one. I told you. It's the NFL. They're going to yeah. win some games. But uh, New England won their Super Bowl last week. I think uh, Seattle's a much better team. Give me Seattle by five or more. Okay. Pat, what to cover you? comfortably. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I, six points. A lot of points. <laughs> A lot of points. Give, oh, me, give me the Pats. Give me the Pats. I'm riding the train. I'm riding the train. It doesn't matter. Drake May, Jacoby Brissett, doesn't matter. <laughs> Train's going to derail, man, because Gino is greater than Jacoby. Give I like me myself, the Seahawks. I, I like a redemp so, arc. I love Gino. I'm a big fan, but, you know, maybe he wins know, by think, five points. Maybe he wins by four Pat, points. You, you, know? you just got some leftover Stockholm syndrome going on from the drought years or something like this, this New England affection. It is a lot easier to like them now that they don't have, you know, yeah, I like Gerard. I think you know, Gerard's Palpatine cool and, and Darth Vader, but I, I do like Gerard Mayo, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if he develops Drake. May we're all going to hate him, but that's anyways, true. the game of the week, Thursday night football, super unfortunate for everybody that has to work on Friday, Buffalo at Miami, Miami's minus two and a half point favorites. It's going to feel like a hundred degrees, even though it's going to be at eight o'clock at night. Pat, lead us off. Who do you got? I think the bills kicked the game winning field goal while behind not clearing Ooh. that two and a half point spread. Um, but I don't, I don't really give a shit. They beat us two, was it two years ago, three years ago in Miami and we still made the playoffs, made a decent run. So I don't, I don't really care, but <laughs> Pat pretending like he doesn't care. 
I, I, I feel like we'll find out that you do care what, you know, when that clock hits zero, I <laughs> oh, feel God. like we all find out how much we care when that happens. That's, that's no how much we say they don't. <laughs> good point. <laughs> oh, all right. I got four words. Give me the bills, baby. Give me the bills, baby. Brandon, Dolphins, what do you think? call Josh Allen, your daddy one more time for the 11th time out of 12 games. I don't even know if that's right. No, it would be that's the close. 11th time out like of that. 13 games. Josh Allen owns you. He's going to continue to own you. I will pick him every single time until you string a couple wins together. Give me the bills. I like it. Yes, I like sir. it. All right. And we, we're going to get a little bit more into this game with Brando's bets here. Brando's bets coming off of a hot start. James Cook and the Buffalo Bills cashing that first Brando bet of the week. But just remember now the uh, Brando's bet is brought to you by DraftKings and the uh, TD Tutty taking it to the house, whatever you call a touchdown. They matter more at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Are you ready to place your first NFL bet? Try betting on something simple like a player to score a touchdown. Maybe it's James Cook to score a touchdown. Maybe it's Josh Allen to score a touchdown. Seems to be like automatic money for Josh Allen to score a touchdown on the ground if he's going to hurdle Jordan Poirier. Maybe we can put that in specifically. I don't know. Find out on DraftKings. Are you ready to do a touchdown dance of your own? Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code NABP. That is code NABP, not another Buffalo podcast, for new customers to get $250 in bonus bets when you bet just five bucks and get one month of NFL Plus Premium. Only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball. NFL Plus Premium. Premium offer available only to new and former NFL Plus subscribers. Additional NFL Plus premium terms at NFL.com slash terms. Time for Brando's Bets. All right, we're cooking on a nice flat stovetop, some steaks. We're going to go 2-0 here, baby. We are cooking in a gourmet kitchen because Josh Allen is going to fillet these dolphins like a fish fillet from McDonald's on Friday during Lent. Buy one, get one free. The Bills have destroyed this team, and Josh Allen has won maybe six or seven Offensive Player of the Weeks against the Dolphins. Let me give you a couple stats here. Josh Allen versus the Finns, 10-2 and record all time. Average passing yards per game, 280. Average touchdown pass passes per game 2.8 I didn't even take rushing stats because I don't care because he doesn't need them because he's going to own them either way so Brando bet this week the Buffalo Bills as underdogs you can buy points pretty nicely here so the Buffalo Bills I took plus seven and a half they have won 42 games in a row by no they have what is it 42 games in a row Give me this lost, here, lost by the, they have not lost by more than six points in 42 straight games. Yes, they have not lost. <laughs> that's a mouthful. They have <laughs> not is. lost by more than six <laughs> points in 42 games. It's an NFL record. And so if you take plus seven and a half, I mean, that's like taking a Brinks truck to the bank, baby. So this is not financial advice, by the way, but it is Josh Allen, baby. And so the Bills plus seven and a half, one leg of the parlay. Allen plus one passing TD on the parlay because he averages 2.8 a game. That seems like good math. And then finally, with that 280 passing yard average Allen has against the Dolphins, we are going to add Allen plus 225 passing yard prop parlay that comes out to minus 115 almost even money if you find a boost maybe you get a little bonus pop there but almost even money there for something that i think is going to cash maybe even by halftime we'll see if he throws 225 yards by halftime we're going to jump for joy so that is my brando bet of the week let's see if we can move it to two and oh what do you think john I like it. I, I do probably have to take off here, though, fellas. You're good. You're right. good. We're done. Final, we're fi- done. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're wrapping it up. I was going to say. Enjoy your weekend with the baby, man. Go Bills. Go Luca. Go baby mama. I hope you're doing all right. Tell her we said hi. All right. Well, you guys can find us on all platforms at Nut Buff Podcast. Check out some clips that we put on there. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's always a huge help. Um, you know, give us a review in Apple Podcasts if you enjoyed the show. All right. Yeah, that'll do it for this week. Go Bills, beat the Finns, and uh, hopefully we're talking to you guys next week at 2-0. That would be great, right? Squish the fish. Squish the fish. 
I love it. I Squish love stuff. It. <laughs> Three times. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills.